Hello there. What is going on, everyone? Today, we've got some cool previews to talk about. AMG has given us a good look at the You Cannot Run pack coming for Star Wars Shatterpoint. This is Vader. This is Obi-Wan Kenobi. And this is my fingers interlocked. It's Cthulhu coming for you. No. Uh, what's going on, everybody? Uh, we talk a lot about Star Wars tabletop games on the channel, so I'd love to have you stick around. We are doing a big $50 uh, Amazon gift card giveaway. If you want to have a chance to enter that, you just have to be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos. Also, uh, shout out to our sponsor, Luxury Playstyle. They have amazing Full metal tokens, uh, gaming tokens, great for damage tokens. Keep track of your damage on your characters. Uh, they have tokens fully compatible with Star Wars Legion, a whole set for those. Uh, X-Wing, a whole set for those. A lot of just gaming tokens that are compatible with lots of different games. But definitely head over to LuxuryPlaystyle.com. Check them out. Use code CRABLOCKVIP. You'll save 15%. But these are deluxe tokens, folks. You're going to absolutely love them. All right, so uh, Vader and Obi-Wan Kenobi. This is the You Cannot Run pack. It's, uh, they should call it You Cannot Afford This Pack because it's 100 bucks for two miniatures. Uh, you're getting, you're getting uh, a, a terrain piece also, uh, but it's a terrain piece that you can't use in the game because it's like this diorama where it's cut square on the side so it doesn't actually fit into the surrounding terrain. It's very, just a very awkward thing. I, th I think it's really, like, designed for people who want a diorama on their wall or on their mantle or are looking to paint, like, a competition set piece or something like that. But also there's supposed to be some pieces of the terrain that, like, if you don't glue them down, you can use them as scatter terrain in your games. So I guess there's that. Uh, I'll, I'll be picking it up. I'll definitely be doing a review. Uh, this is, uh, I think, one of our, you know, our first ways of getting like Darth Vader into the game uh it's they're going to be multi-era packs or multi-era characters uh you know, we're getting a couple of uh things from the Kenobi series you know we already talked about the Inquisitor pack uh but this one is the you cannot run pack very interesting in what it allows you to do in the game and also thematic characters from uh Vader versus Kenobi in the Kenobi series a lot of that in between, you know, the, the, the prequels and the, uh, the you know, Galactic Civil War, the classic trilogy. So, let's take a look at what we see here. So, first off, we've got Obi-Wan Kenobi. Obi-Wan. Well, there's a name I've not heard in a long time. He, uh, Obi-Wan is a secondary in this particular set, which is very, very interesting. Because what this means is that you can get different types of setups. Like, you could have this Obi-Wan teaming up with Anakin, and then you could have, you know, Ahsoka teaming up with, maybe not Obi-Wan, but, like, maybe a different Jedi, like, um, like, like you know, Plo Koon, or, or, you know, different things like that. So you can, like, it's a cool way to fit, like, more Jedi into your list. Um, but, but he's, uh, but you can also potentially have Obi-Wan on the same team as Darth Vader, which is something that you could do. If you'll notice in the top left, while he does cost four points, he is also dual era. So he is both Clone Wars and he is Galactic Civil War. It's very, very cool. You can actually have him join the Inquisitors if you want, which just kind of allows you some really cool stuff. Like what if Obi-Wan did join the dark side, right? I love it. It allows you to play, play, play those things out. And, and that certainly there's, there, I think there's a, and let me know what you guys think, but I think it's possible to even conceive of that because he was in a dark place, as we saw in this series. Like, it, it, you know, if he was ever going to turn, this might have been one of those moments where he did. Uh, or maybe, maybe it was Satine that caused him to leave the Jedi Order. You know, like you can do your alternate histories and, and come up with some of these things. Like, you know, maybe Obi-Wan and some Mandalorians or something like that. You know, of course, we had the Mandalorian arc in the Clone Wars, too. There's all kinds of different ways that you could justify weird teams, but also allows you to do more Jedi-centric teams. So very cool stuff in this this particular guy, all right? So he's, um, he's a secondary unit. He's Obi-Wan Kenobi out of hiding. Um, he doesn't give you any force points because, again, he is a secondary. Uh, and he's got some interesting abilities. Now, he is a force user, and he is a Jedi. But he is not anything else. 
So while he's cool, you're not getting many keywords here. You're not getting like rebellion keywords. So he'll probably won't have too much synergy with like future rebel era packs. You're not going to have too much synergy with the Galactic Civil War or, or the or the sequel or the prequels or definitely not the sequels. But like, you know, if you were to pair him up with like Rex and Anakin and Cody and stuff, there's going to be very limited synergies because he's only got those two keywords. Um, he does have, uh, so he's got some, some powers here. So he's uh, got run. At the start of this unit's activation, choose a character in this unit or another allied character that is engaged with an enemy character. The chosen character may heal and uh, reposition. So basically, like, it's an advance, but even if you're engaged. So that's like, the, like one of the best movements uh, in the game, um, which is really cool. And so he gets to just reposition and heal at the start of his activation. So really cool. Great character to consider using your Shatter Point card on, too, because then you get to activate him twice and get, get like, double free actions. So um, in a game that's all about moving to the, the objective and stuff, that's really cool. He's also got Mind Trick, a nice little reactive. Costs two force to do the Mind Trick. Uh, when an allied character within three is targeted by an attack, this unit may use this ability. The attack ends. Just ends. It's just like, boom. Oh, were you going to attack him? No. Stop. You're done. Well, kind of. It ends there, but if it's the attacker's activation, why is that important? I'll explain in a second. Uh, they may make another attack targeting a different character. If it does, remove two dice from the attack roll. All right, so the reason they say the attack ends because a lot of abilities that we're seeing in the game, including one that Vader does and plenty from the core set and other stuff, give other character free, like, five dice attacks and things like that. There's a plenty of ways for people to get free attacks that are outside of their activation. So if that's one of those cases, it's just they lose it, it doesn't get to happen, and it's done. But if somebody's actually spending their turn to attack, he's kind of mind-tricking you, saying, no, you, these aren't the droids you're looking for. But I have a feeling this is an ability that went through lots of revisions. I can tell just by reading this, they went through a whole lot. It's like, man, it could really be a feels-bad experience if Obi-Wan were to say, hey, no attack for you, and then you lose your whole activation that way. So it's, it's, it's letting you make another attack with two less dice. So kind of it kind of stops your attack, but... If you have another option, you can make that. It'll be a little weaker. So you still get to do something, but this is also an expensive ability. So this means if you're going up against this Obi-Wan, you want, you know, like, you, first off, you're going to have to keep at least two force on reserve. More than that, if he's injured, right? If he's wounded. So, uh, yeah, it's going to go up in cost significantly as he starts to take damage. Um, he's got greater purpose. This is a really cool one. It's like a nice passive here. Uh, he has immunity to exposed. Uh, when he would gain an exposed token, that little exclamation point, I think that's exposed, yeah. Um, one character in this unit may heal instead. Now, anytime they say, like, this guy, like Obi-Wan Kenobi, they always say one character in this unit. That's just, like, a future-proofing terminology that they like to do. Uh, I have a feeling there's going to be something eventually that, like, can add a character to a unit. Maybe, like, little droids. Maybe R2-D2 can, like augment a unit or something like that where you could be obi-wan and a droid or or something like that or maybe a loath cat or something i have a feeling they're going to do stuff like that eventually or at least keeping the door open for it but it's also uh, probably a good way to kind of allow greater purpose to be a keyword that could go on something else maybe you had like a a, a uh, a support that was like a two-person unit that was like a generic Jedi Knight and a Padawan or something like that. And then maybe they want to have the same ability reused for it and stuff. So there'll be just one character in that unit. I feel I have a feeling that's the kind of kind of stuff they're doing there. Then you've also got a last stand of the Jedi. Uh, for each injured token, this unit has characters in this characters in this unit add two dice to their attack and defense rolls. So um, it's interesting this is characters because like if you were to have the same keyword used on like a multi-unit, that'd be even that'd be really cool too. Um, so with with eight you know eight uh, eight health and uh, two stamina, like he could potentially if, if like if it's his last activation, he's gonna have two uh, injured tokens. Uh, he'd be adding four dice to his attack and his defense roll. Well, defense rolls, you know. Well, it'll help the first time. It'll help you stop getting wounded as much. So he's going to get stronger as he gets, uh, as he gets, uh, you know, weaker and stuff. So like, like pretty cool stuff. Stronger as he gets weaker. Yeah, uh, I thought that's pretty, pretty slick. 
Um, he's got his, uh, no, since he's a secondary, he doesn't have two forms here. He's just got the form three Suresu, no other stances. Um, he's got a pretty solid defensive expertise, right? There's just one, two, and threes. Like, the, so nothing wasted there. That's pretty good. Um, he's got a, he's got a decent offensive expertise, but it's not great. You know, one is just one. Two is a crit and a, and a, and a success and a strike, right? So, like, you've got a little bit of that. Um, it's, it's not the best expertise. Again, he's, he's kind of rediscovering his power at this point. He's been, I mean, he's in kind of semi-retirement. He's a little rusty, um, but he's playing the area control game really well. Look at his, his trees, right? So again, no ranged attack here. Five defense dice either way. Six melee attack. Uh, six melee attack dice. He'll get more as as uh, as things go on. He, but he doesn't need to get that many through. Notice he only needs four strikes. He only needs four successes to do everything. And so you've got lots of pushing, right? He can push twice. Or he can do some healing, depending on how many you get. He can do some massive healing if you go all the way down the bottom. He can reposition. He can jump. Um, he, he go down the middle row. He can push, push. I mean, he can do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven potential damage uh, with that middle row. It's pretty cool stuff. Like, I don't think he really needs to get injured twice and roll that many dice because, again, he only needs four successes to, to do, like, his maximum results. I think uh, having an injured token giving him two defense dice extra is really where he's going to shine. He, he's probably going to be a pretty pretty tough character to take down because not only, you know, once he gets wounded and has that injury token, you know, that phrase, like his second uh, his second go around, he's also going to be healing a ton, you know, because he's going to be doing more, he's throwing more dice with the, with the melee attack. Hey, you know what, that's more likely for me to heal all the way back up to full or to support uh, other, other folks. Um, or just pushing you off the objective. So I think he's pretty cool. Pretty pretty decent, solid folk. Um, but his weakness here really is, I think, the lack of synergy with other builds. He's going to be kind of standalone, uh, which is kind of appropriate for where he is at this point in the story. But let's talk about Darth Vader because, whoo boy. All right, now, look, Darth Vader's like all black and black pretty much black hair he, it, with some purple uh, uh, text and stuff like that for the, his symbology and stuff. So really cool looking. 12 health, 3 stamina. You're not killing Darth Vader. Darth Vader is immortal. He can't be killed, basically. <laughs> I say that, but it's, I mean, I, I suppose it is possible. There should be some kind of thing, like if you can take Darth Vader. Maybe that'll be a, another like mission or something like that where you can, you can get points for killing people as part of like the next you know, mission set or something like that. Um, so Vader is the primary that comes in this pack. He is seven squad points uh, for force. Four force is pretty good. You're going to need it because you're going to be using force like crazy. Uh, but the seven squad point uh, means that with a four point secondary, which all the, all the secondaries are four right now that I've seen, um, it means you can take the 501st with Darth Vader, but you can't take one of the slightly more expensive um, supports. So, but but have, being able to take 501st is really cool because that's kind of what you want to do for that thematic Vader leading, leading the 501st kind of build. So, like, I'm there. I like it. Let's let's make it happen. It just sounds it sounds really cool. I love it. Okay, so uh, Darth Vader, Jedi Hunter. He's a primary unit. Uh, he it also gives you the little disclaimer here. This unit cannot be included in a strike team with Anakin Skywalker. Again, your strike team is your whole build. You can't have one squad with Vader and then the other squad with Anakin, you know. Um, I don't know why that is. It's weird. And now, granted, I haven't finished watching the Star Wars movies yet, so I don't know what happens. I don't want any spoilers. But I do think it's weird that you couldn't take Darth Vader and Anakin Skywalker. What are they, like, not like each other or something? I don't know. It's weird. Let me know in the comments if you guys have any, <laughs> if any <laughs> thoughts as to why that might be. Um... Vader's Fury, uh, so he's got some cool abilities, so uh, let's talk about Vader's Fury. Each character in this unit may advance uh, during the next attack made by characters in this unit. Uh, well, again, that's just him. Darth Vader may advance during Darth Vader's next attack. Um, after all dice have been modified, add two more damage to the damage pool. So he's going to do at least two damage to you anyway, but probably more than that. He's... Dude, he's 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 a he's a he's a killer, right? He's a hunter. 
It costs you a force to do that. But the cool thing is, it's a free move and giving you two extra damage on your next attack. So instead of moving and attacking, you you know, pay the force that gets two extra damage automatically. Especially if you know you only need a little bit of damage to kill somebody. Uh, he's got Ripost, which you have probably seen before on other characters. But it's you know if they if they have a fail when they're melee attacking you, you he does two more damage right back to you. Again, he likes Vader likes to deal two damage. He's dropping deuces all over the competition. <laughs> Giggity. All right. Um, <laughs> oh, that's fun. That's I don't even know if that's funny or not, but that's that's interesting. All right. Uh, the Sith Lord strikes back. Uh, when this unit is wounded by an attack after the attack is resolved, you may use this ability. One character's unit may immediately dash and make a five dice attack. Again, a five dice attack targeting the character that wounded it. Now, this one I, I think is maybe the least good ability on here. Reason being, like Maul, other characters have similar abilities. Oh, if you wound me, well, I get to I get to counterattack you. Now, wound means you have to be wounded, which means it has to be, like, the 12th damage, right? Like, not just, oh, I just got hit, you hit me once and put, like, one damage on me. That doesn't trigger it. Um, so, again, with, with a high health pool, it's less likely that somebody's going to wound you, you know, because, again, they have to get a whole lot of damage on you to wound you. But it can happen. It might happen at least once. Um, but since so many attack pools have push or shove effects that are going to push you away... Um, when I have had the opportunity to make this ha happen on other characters, I usually find that, yeah, you know, they like they see this coming. It's like, well, I'm not going to go wound Vader uh, unless I can also push him away because I don't want him getting a free attack on me. But we go back to Obi Wan's ability uh, with the mind trick, since this is this counter attack is not during Vader's activation, so it wouldn't be Vader's combat action. Obi Wan could shut that attack down and just say, nope, boom, doesn't happen. It's kind of interesting. Nice little way the things kind of work together, you know. It's like, it's not really, I don't know what this is. Is this, is this, is this like an angry jellyfish? All right, so um, your hatred makes you powerful. Now, this is a really nice ability. Uh, when an allied character makes a melee attack as part of a combat action, again, melee attack that's part of the combat action, not a free bonus attack. Um, after choosing a target, the, attack, the unit may suffer two damage. If it does, they, they add three of dice to the attack rule. This is so cool because it makes me really want it. It, it can work with Obi-Wan because he can suffer damage to kind of... like he, like he it's, it's like, what if Obi-Wan was going to be evil with Vader? You get to do that. But I'm thinking about other characters. Like, what about Maul? Who now gets extra dice for however many damage he's got on him. That's what I really want to run. Is Vader and Maul side by side. That's like my new dream team, and that's what I'm looking forward to to running. Uh, and and this is the game that you can do it. You can't run Vader and Maul together in, in Legion. You can't run Vader and Maul together, and I think in any other game. So this is super cool, and I'm super excited about it. Uh, for his stances, he's got uh, a, a gem so stance that has the lightsaber throw, which is really nice. I think that's kind of be the one that you kind, that I kind of use most of the time. Um, it's, it's got a pretty good defense if you happen to get just at least one, uh, defensive surge. It's got six defense dice against both types, which is great. He's got seven for his ranged attack, but only range four. So he's throwing a lightsaber really hard with seven dice. He's still got six of dice for, six dice for his melee attack also, which is nice. Um, the lightsaber, you know, for a single one, you're getting two hits, which is nice. Um... But he's got he's got some decent little damage potential. Uh, you might see this symbol over here. I hadn't seen this one at the end. It, that's a uh, a climb symbol. So the funny thing is, Vader can't jump. He can't force jump, like in any games that I've I've seen. It's just that he does. He just never has. Like Vader doesn't use the force to fly. I think it's because his suit must be like really really heavy. I think that must be what it is. Um, and, and, and realistically, it's I would actually wager it has something to do with Lucasfilm saying no no. Vader walks. He's like that. That that he's like that Frankenstein or the mummy. Like he just he 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 comes at you on foot. He doesn't do all the gymnastics, and Vader doesn't do the flips. And Vader, you know, Vader, Anakin did the flips, but Vader, no. Vader just trudges on like a monster movie villain. And I think they wanted to keep that. So while he can climb, because you you know you still have to be able to get up and you know go up ladders and stairs and things like that to 
because this game is all about elevation. They didn't want to give him jump, so they gave him climb. I get it. It makes sense. Um, cool stuff. Uh, but he's got a lot of damage potential there. But uh, Dark Rage is his other side. Uh, this one is got a ton of potential, whether you want to damage people, kill them. But a lot of pushing potential, a lot of shoving off. A single uh, offensive expertise is going to get you two criticals, too. That's nice, really nice. And th don't forget, he's probably adding two extra damage on top of this attack, no matter what, as well. So Dark Rage, really cool. Uh, but no ranged attack on Dark Rage? and less defense. So ideally, I think you, you start on gem so, you stay on gem so until you have that activation where you're moving in for the kill, and then you switch over to Dark Rage and just be like, oh, I'm sorry, did I just one-shot you? You're, uh, you know, you know, now, now you're done, and I'm gonna get you next turn, and the turn after that too. You know, that's, that, that's Vader. I think it's going to be really fun, uh, but not just for the offensive and strategies and, and cool stuff like that, but also for, for the, just the other fun things that you can do, right? Oh, by the way, let me go back and look at Vader's card here. Uh, did we talk about his keywords? He's got a lot of keywords, and this is huge. Force user, Galactic Empire, Galactic Republic, what? Right? Inquisitorious and Sith. He's got five keywords. This, my friends, is the star of the show. This is the reason you buy this pack. He combos with everything. Well, everything that they could manage to justify. I just, it, it's insane. He's Republic and Empire. He's leading the five. You, obviously, you're going to put him with the 501st, right? Like, that seems to be. Can't put him with Mandos. It wouldn't make too much sense, but. You know, I mean, I mean, I guess you could put like, you know, if they eventually do Boba Fett or whatever, or Django, right? Or, well, Django, you can do Django. Django's in game, so you can, you could do a little bit of that. I don't know, I guess, um, you know, but uh, but yeah, I mean, but you, you, not really. You're not going to really put him with Mandos, right? You're going to put him with the five hundred first. You're probably going to give him Obi Wan Kenobi. Maybe give him Padawan Ahsoka Tano. Ah, uh, that's cool, right? Ah, uh, so many crazy things you can do. Let me know some of your crazy thoughts on things that you can do with Vader and, and of course, with Obi-Wan Kenobi. Out of hiding. Into action. Evil or good? How will you play him? <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, you get it. I get so much fun out of it. This is exciting stuff. All right, guys. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Big thanks to my patrons. You guys are amazing and help make this channel possible. I will talk to you later. May the Force be with you. Live long and prosper. Be excellent to each other. Party on, dude. The spice must flow. Cowabunga. And go, ninja. Go, ninja. Go.